introduce each paper, each individual presenter and paper. Uh, and I'll um, give a, what I regard as a summary of uh, what I gleaned from the papers just by way of introduction. As you all know, you have uh, 15 minutes and uh, you'll get a five minute warning and a one minute warning if required. And um, we'll take questions. We'll take, we'll take, whoops, we'll take questions uh, at the end of each paper. Okay. So um, we'll begin uh, with uh, my my old friend, except we never see each other in person, J Joseph Anself, the Department of Leadership for Learning and Innovation, Faculty of Education, University of Malta. The title of the paper is The COVID-19 Pandemic and Its Effects on the Pre-Service Teacher Practicum, a Literature Review. And this paper proceeds from the recognition that the hardest hit teacher training dimension among the considerable COVID disruptions was the pre-service practicum. The paper offers a comprehensive literature review of numerous and varied practicum modalities that were defined and conducted around the globe in the, during the pandemic in 2021. Uh, 2020 and 2021. The literature review addresses, in my view, the important question of how pa the pandemic has impacted teacher education in broad terms and students' practicum in particular terms. This is a review with consequences, I see it, as it explores alternative pedagogies and emergent technologies and applications critical for teacher education beyond normal and established educational practices. Uh, I'll ask um, those that are uh, not presenting, Il Elena, if you could turn off your camera. And thank you. And uh, we'll turn the floor over to Joseph. Thank you, Martin. Um, I must start with a disclaimer. Um, I'm a specialist in e-learning, or, or as it is called in today online learning um, i'm also the field placement coordinator of the faculty of education of the university of malta uh, where i place students uh, to do their practicum to do their experience in teaching now contrary to what has been written in anecdotal accounts that is that online learning is beneficial um, for teacher training the scientific the, the, the emerging scientific in, inquiries is proving are proving the country indeed many students and academics are saying that the, that, the, that the modality is creating stress and anxiety um, upon the teachers and the learners. So that's my disclaimer. We are starting to see the end of the pandemic hopefully indeed um, yesterday in Malta um, the health authorities have stopped the restriction of face coverings for face coverings um, if you're in a group of two you can take off your mask otherwise you have to keep your mask on but that was one of the uh, restrictions that is being lifted and something that is bringing hope to the population which has now um, been suffering isolation and and other other woes um, for um, for more than from more than for more than a year we've been battling um, COVID as all of the other countries since mid-March 2020.
during 2020, you, you, you all know that schools and universities had to shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic, causing disruptions in initial teacher education in many parts of the world. The training dimension, as Martin has um, correctly um, said uh, in, this, uh, in, his, in his introduction, um, was the hardest hit in the pre-service. Uh, sorry, um, the training on dimension that was hardest hit um, in teacher training was the pre-service practical. Due to the shutdown, prospective teachers were deprived of the normal field experience and actual classroom teaching practices in authentic school settings. I had a situation where I had sent 150 students uh, on their field placement and the practicum had to be cut short after two weeks. So what did I intend to, what was the objective of this, of this study I carried out? This is a literature review, a literature review of works that mentioned the practical um, that were published throughout 2020 and in the early months of 2021. Various practical modalities developed all over the globe, and these are documented in many papers published during 2020 and early 2021. And this is a systematic literature review, which attempts to answer the question, how has COVID-19 impacted teacher education and particularly the students practically? As you all know, the practicum is a key component of initial teacher education programs. It is during this phase that future teachers can apply all the theoretical and pedagogical knowledge that they have acquired during their studies and test teaching abilities and critical thinking skills. It is usually a formative exercise. However, as in Malta, um, some education institutions, it is also a summative assessment process which grades students, which grades the abilities and the competence of students in their work. The literature agreed that qualified teachers, students and faculty members were rather lost when the schools and colleges were physically shut down. So while lectures, while lectures continued through um, video conferencing platforms like Zoom or MS Teams, um, the practicum was difficult to hold. And there was this feeling that there was this feeling that we had to create something new, something acceptable to the school leaders. So to fulfill their obligations, teachers, teachers already in schools, lecturers and students had to rapidly adapt to web-based remote pedagogies, particularly real-time lessons using video conferencing and asynchronous pre-recorded lessons. In March 2020, all qualified teachers went online. And this was a sudden change of setting and teaching modality. Similarly, student teachers, similarly pre-service teachers had to adapt to online university lectures. The practicum due to health and safety protocols had, could only be held remotely. 
and online due to health and, as I said, safety protocols. So um, there was this sudden change in modality. And it this was stressful, particularly those students um, who saw the practical as a means, as a test, um, as an important step in their in their um, graduate in their graduate training. In Malta, we offer the master in teacher um, in teaching and learning. This was a difficult move. This was a really difficult move, particularly because online learning was not a preferred mode of teaching and learning. So although generally termed online education, few educators and students had knowledge, sorry for that mistake, had knowledge of the theory and were trained in the practice of online teaching and learning. They rather used video conferencing and recordings of lessons to substitute and emulate classroom teaching. Nevertheless, this transition proved difficult to both pre-service teachers and their educators. Preliminary research in the field um, is showing that um, uh, the um, education academics are saying that any practical, an electronic practical, can never substitute. It can help, but it can never substitute a real, authentic, in classroom um, um, practical in the classroom. However, many were concerned with the recruitment of new teachers. And we're concerned also with the dangers of preparing teachers who know much about theory and little about practice. Indeed, we, we were thinking of uh, not doing the practical, but we had this pressure, um, we had to succumb to this pressure and uh, um, coming from ministries and other stakeholders and that these teachers needed experience of an ex the experience of teaching. Five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. So they rather use video conferencing and recordings, um, as I said, to substitute and emulate. Uh, this transition proved difficult to both pre-service teachers and their educators. Sifting through the papers, I found four um, conceptualizations, four um, themes that emerged strongly from the papers. One was video conferencing. There were various modalities that were used. Pre service teachers cooperated, for example, with teachers and built technology mediated lessons that were then integrated into collaborating teacher schemes of work. There, were, there was the re-emergence of micro-teaching, that is peer learning whereby pre-service teachers acted as students. Senior teachers were also asked to teach family members and friends, children in the near neighborhood or local community, and even compose that type mini lessons. This happened in many countries, for example, in Israel, in Cyprus, and um, in other countries. There was, um, there was a lot of anxiety brought through this unpredictability. As Alice and uh, other authors note, 
education came to a screeching halt in March 2020. The transitioning speed had to be fast and the impact was profound. The students could never have envisioned this unpredictable scenario and drastic change. There, there was a feeling of shock and confusion. Students felt like being thrown at the deep end. This first created a fear of the unknown and a lot of anxiety. The papers also agreed that, however, there was this positive shift towards technology-mediated education. This was a more positive um, benefit. It, it was a benefit of, of the pandemic. Um, this positive shift observed in university examiners assessment processes and the students' attitudes. The lockdown helped to alleviate academic staff and students' fears about online learning and removed some of the resistance that existed in pre-COVID days. Kedan Marie, for example, reported that most of those concerned experienced a sense of innovation as they developed new technological skills or reconfigured uh, sorry or reconfigured or reconfigured um, previous practices for the online environment the literature indi indeed indicates indicates that these covid mandated yet previously existing practices can also ease the transition from teacher training courses to professional practice. What I'm saying here is that um, practices like micro teaching um, can help in, uh, in the transition from the university to the classroom. One minute. Thank you. What's happening here? Okay. There was a lack of a training. The, the papers reported that in all countries there was a lack of training in e learning. School leaders, academics, and students failed to differentiate between e learning and distance learning caused by the health classes. In e learning, there tends to be extensive, anticipated, and careful planning, long term investment strategies um, that are long-term and evidence-based approaches to establish the desired type of learning environment. In distance learning, ongoing planning and design of online courses on the spot adaptations to face-to-face -face courses and familiarization with new technologies for teaching and learning seem to be the predominant factors. So, um, Teachers lacked the training. Pre-service teachers also lacked the training in the learning. And above all, academics lacked the training in e-learning. So, the last slides. Field placement had to readapt itself to the since learning forms during 2020. Inequality and social injustice um, um, were noted in the papers communities of teacher training providers okay where the technology internet infrastructure was looking um, the training provision lacked the literature agrees that academics and students needed more exposure to theoretical knowledge and online learning experiences before engaging in e practicals. The literature showed that the influence of COVID-19 pandemic, of the COVID-19 pandemic on a global scale has shocked pre-service teachers and academics involved in the non-traditional practice, often causing high levels of stress and anxiety. 
at the same time the long term emergency inspired them to find solutions to problems that they have not encountered before. A number of benefits were, however, noted. These included, uh, in addition to learning how to teach, students also learned how to teach online, a valuable and needed commodity in today's world. A change in attitude towards technology by students and academics towards technology-enhanced learning or technology-mediated learning. This is the last slide. The other benefits include there is an increase, there is a noted increase in interactivity, relatedness and professional learning, um, sustained in, for example, professional learning communities that involve collaborating teachers, mentors, assessors, and students. The more innovative approaches, for example, micro-teaching through internet-mediated recordings and remote PLCs might be retained in the future. Obviously, there is a dearth here of uh, literature needed, of investigations needed. So, to conclude, to the fear of a perceived substandard practicum still exists, okay? And as I said, there is still a dearth of research about the E practicum. That's it. Thank you, Joseph. Um, Thanks, Martin. I, I'll ask for um, any questions. Uh, and you can either uh, pose questions in the chat or just simply turn on your microphone. Um, we don't have a lot of time for questions. Uh, how, however, uh, we have a little bit of time. I, um, I do have a question, <laughs> if I may. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I was struck, as you could anticipate, no doubt, with the um, considering my own paper with it, your disclaimer, which I found most compelling. Uh, it actually gave a foundation to what you said, particularly around the stress, the dissatisfaction, the isolation um, that felt in online teacher training. Um, I'm not gonna ask you for the remedies because that would be impossible to do, but I wonder if you might expand on this. I, I, was, I was wanting to attach this disclaimer to um, your observation that, um, teachers, students, faculty were, quote, rather lost. And you characterized, I think, very forcefully, the sense of anxiety and unpredictability. Is there, when you look at a global perspective, as the literature review did, is there also not a highly differential uh, ground of opportunity? It depends on, you know, the, 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 our ability to move smartly and strategically and productively with remote resources depends on infrastructure and not all countries and uh, all contexts have the access to those resources. And I, I wondered if this differential ground uh, it w was something that came up in the literature and something that you've thought about. Um, Accessibility and opportunity. I must start with uh, an anecdote. I remember one of my professors giving a whole lecture about dialogue in education mm. in a straightforward lecture. It was a lecture about dialogue. Why am, am I saying this? Because the problem is not only structural. The problem is um, the way academics look at technology. Technology is still seen as um, the black sheep of educational institutions. We know we need it. We know that it is good for students, yet we still spend far 
less time talking and working with students on technology enhanced solutions than we do, for example, on theory and other um, content knowledge. Mm -hmm. I think we need to change the attitude within the universities themselves. I think the universities need to open up. I think teacher education institutions need to open up to these new technologies. We do have, for example, blockchain. We can't go better than that in technology mediated education, if you want. But blockchain is not used. The first thing that came to your mind when I said blockchain is money. Yep. It's Bitcoin. But or ideology. Or ideology. <laughs> so, um, but, but Bitcoin can be used in, in, in technology enhanced education. Um, but no one is um, diving into that arena. So is um, yesterday I I had the uh, I uh, um, I followed one of the presentation about AI artificial intelligence. Again, AI is not is not being treated well at universities. It is the stuff for engineers. It's not the stuff for educators. When AI, um, when I, I started using AI, when I was nine year old, with my first um, calculator at school. And today we have so much technology. We have robots. We have uh, um, interactive whiteboards. But students are still, and educators are still, uh, skeptic about technology. Huh. I, um, I, I agree. I think this is a, a key determinant. This is an issue that we could uh, and should debate at length, but uh, I'm cognizant of my responsibilities as timekeeper. <laughs> so I'm so I'm going to bring this to a close. I'm going to thank Joseph very much. Of course, if we were in the room to get all together, we you would hear applause. Thanks, Martin. Uh, all right. See you next. Um, I hope to see you next year in person. In Fidenza, absolutely <laughs> the case. Thank you again. Thank you. Cheers, Martin. Cheers. We'll move on to our second presenter when the slides come up.